please join me for the call to worship. We gather this morning to worship our God, God the Creator who made us and loves us unconditionally, Jesus our Redeemer who calls us to be Christ-like in all that we do and all we say, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter who sustains, inspires, and revives us. So join us now in worship and rise as you're able as we raise our voices with praise to God. So be with us now as we come as family, as we come as being one, as we worship you this day through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Welcome. A few reminders. Um, if you are worshiping in person today, remind you to make sure you take your Keeping a Touch card and fill it out and put it in the basket as uh, the baskets come around. Also, if um, you are worshiping with us online today, hit the like button or put a comment in the remarks. Let us know that you're worshiping with us. Our capital campaign is still going on for a couple more weeks. If you haven't uh, engaged in being a part of that, I strongly encourage you to pray about it and to be a part of our summer campaign. New members class will be on August 21st on a Saturday from 10 to 12. Uh, most of you who um, have a uh, most of you who have expressed interest have probably received a letter in the mail from me this week about new members class and inviting you to be a part of that. Um, if you do want to be a part of that, make sure that you contact me or contact the church office so we can get you registered for that. Uh, script cards are still going. Um, next Sunday is the deadline for this next order. Uh, lots of things are happening next Sunday, but uh, script cards, if you are planning to uh, order script cards, there's uh, forms out in the narthex. You can take those and uh, bring those back next week. If you're uh, worshiping online, you can get a form on our website and mail that in to us if you wish to get script. You probably saw that there's a couple inserts in your bulletins this morning. Uh, one is for the rummage sale, which is next excuse me, two weeks from Saturday on the 31st. If you are planning to donate something, we'd really like to know. So if you um, go through the form and fill it out if you're planning to donate or bring stuff, whatever, and put that in the basket as they go around this morning so we can uh, see if we need to pick up things or just kind of what we're doing. You can bring your items next Sunday. We will uh, have a place for you to bring them. So if you're uh, planning to bring stuff for the rummage sale, please do so uh, next Sunday or talk to us and make arrangements for that. 
And lastly, starting next week, we, um, as I mentioned last week, we are starting a new mission project with our siblings at Angels of Hope MCC, where it's something called Pack the Pantry. And there's an insert also in your bulletin this morning, and for people worshiping online, uh, you can uh, see that on our website. Pack the Pantry is an endeavor that we are doing with uh, Vivant Healthcare. I want to keep calling it ARCW, but since they've changed the name, and also uh, with Courage Milwaukee. And what it is is once a month, um, we will be doing Pack the Pantry, and the items that are listed on the back of that uh, insert that you received are things that we are collecting to help keep their food pantry stocked and keep uh, those who are in need of food and, and uh, staples to keep them uh, plenished with that if they are in need. You can bring them any Sunday, but we, we've designated the fourth Sunday of each month as Pack the Pantry Sunday. So I hope you will engage in being a part of that as we uh, come to uh, help our, our siblings and our, and our neighbors in the community. And with that, as we continue with worship, I invite you to hear God's word. Our epistle lesson this morning comes from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 through 30, 31, taken from the Inclusive Bible. Let us always think how we can stimulate each other to love and do good works. Don't stay away from the meetings of the community, as some do, but encourage one another. And do this all the more as you see the day drawing near. For if we sin deliberately after we have received knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains any sacrifice for sins. There only remains the fearful prospect of judgment and of the raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who rejects the law of Moses is put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. So if you trample God's only begotten underfoot and treat the blood of the covenant, which sanctified you, as if it were something unclean, insulting the spirit of grace, how much more severely do you think you deserve to be punished? We know the one who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, and our God will judge the people. It is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. May God bless the hearing of these words. Please rise as you are able for the reading of the scripture. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 27, taken from the inclusive Bible. The body is one, even though it has many parts. All those parts, many though they are, comprise a single body. And so it is with Christ. It was by one spirit that all of us, whether we are Jews or Greeks, slaves or citizens, were baptized into one body. All of us have been given to drink of the one spirit. And that body is not one part, it is many. If the foot should say, because I am not 
and I, I do not belong to the body. Would that make it any less a part of the body? If the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, would that make it any less a part of the body? If the body were all eye, what would happen to our hearing? If it were all ear, what would happen to our sense of smell? Instead of that, God put all the different parts into one body on purpose. If all the parts were alike, where would the body be? They are, indeed, many different members, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you, any more than the head can say to the feet, I do not need you. And even those members of the body which seem less important are, in fact, indispensable. We honor the members we consider less honorable by clothing them with greater care, thus bestowing on the less presentable a property which is more presentable to not need. God has so constructed the body as to give great honor to the lowly members that there may be no dissension in the body but that all the members may be concerned for one another. If one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members share its joy. You then are the body of Christ, and each of you is a member of it. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. come to prayer with me this day. Embracing and loving God as so many names, we thank you for bringing us together. But we thank you for letting us to come together as family. But we thank you as well for letting us come this day so we can pro proclaim how proud we are of our church and how through your tender mercies and grace you allow us to be the church. But not just the church, but who we are just in your eyes and now I ask with the Spirit comes to us within each and every one of us, let us continue to be the gift to one another through your guidance. Open our hearts this morning, but even more open our minds so we may be the receptors of the words that are about to be spoken. So I ask now that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day, and the words that come from my mouth along with the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they ever be acceptable to you. In Christ we pray, amen. amen. Well, we're in the midst of our sermon series, I Am Proud of My Church. And we continue with this series, and we've been looking at the things that make us proud of who we are as Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church. And at the beginning of the series, I shared that what I was going to do was give you some language to use so when you're out and about, you can articulate 
why you are proud of your church. And last week I said that if you are proud of your that I, if you know that you are proud of your church because you keep coming each and every week, but you also know that those out there probably are saying to you, why are you just so proud of this church? You go each week and you serve and you do all of this stuff. Why do you do all that? They just don't get it sometimes. So here we go. I am proud of my church because my church is family. They say that family is a kind of like fudge, mostly sweet, but with some nuts. <laughs> and of course, we live in a day and age where a lot of people come from broken families and people come from divorce and hurt within families and even sadness, even betrayal and rejection. And that's why so many people in this world are out there lonely. There are surveys out there that say that there are about half of the people in America seem to be lonely. And only one out of four feel like they have a close group of friends. And only half of those people have said that they have a meaningful in-person social interjection with those people. Folks, there are people out there and they are lonely and they want to con be in contact with people. But at the same time, you know that God has already given us the cure for that loneliness. It's called actually the body of Christ. In other words, it's your church family. We are that body of Christ. And each and every one of you belong here because Jesus is in the center of this particular family. And its family is what we know of loving and at the same time giving that blessing to one another. But while we are on that road following Jesus. In this morning's scripture lessons, we heard about the human body has many parts of which they make up the entire body. It further says that some of us are Jews and some of us are Gentiles, some of us are slaves and some of us are free. But we all have been baptized in one body and that body is the body of Christ. I think what this is amounting to is that, it's, that there is no red and yellow or black and white. You know, It says that we are all precious in his sight, that Jesus loves all the little children of the world, right? We come from different backgrounds, different ethnicities, different skin colors. Some of us are rich, some of us are poor. Some of us are politically left, some of us are politically right, and even some of us are politically right there in the middle. But all that doesn't matter, because when each of us walks through those doors, we are united by the same spirit. And what that means is that when we come into the church, that all those securities that we may normally carry in our lives don't that don't belong to the church, stay outside because when we come in, we become that family, that one body of Christ. We are not with people who may be judging us by our outward appearance, appearance, or should we hope that we aren't doing that? And we are people that just because each and every single one of us are a family. Now, if you flip through scriptures, we see that God uses a covenant language that describes roughly three different types of relationships. And if you think about it, all covenant relationships are family relationships. At the same time, a lot of folks, when they hear a covenant relationship, it thinks of that some type of it's a contractual scenario. But a covenant relationship really isn't that. You see, a contract is one part, if one party fails to uphold their side of the bargain, then the other party is released from their obligations. And in a covenant relationship is one where the people in that relationship endure and they stay faithful to one another no matter what. No matter if you left the bathroom light on or if you left, <laughs> left something on the kitchen counter overnight, it's, we all come together no matter what. But the strongest of those covenants in scriptures is the relationships between God and the human being. You see, the Bible talks to us about a new covenant, or as we know it, the New Testament, which is the con that covenant between God and us, and which is conformed and confirmed by the blood of Jesus. And we hear Jesus say that Jesus will never forsake us or leave us. In other words, we have been given the right to be called the children of God. 
we have been adopted into God's family. And God isn't one to unadopt us out of a family. God keeps loving us unconditionally. It's that covenant relationship between God and us. Then there's another covenant relationship, and that's called marriage. Now, the Bible says it's between a husband and a wife and that they become one. But we know that at the same time, that covenant is also between a husband and a husband, and a wife and a wife, and whoever you want to bring together as one. What God has joined together, let no one tear apart. And these are pretty familiar words that we hear when we come to marriage, that that covenant is a part of our life. And then there is that covenant language between Christians and their church. We see it as plain as day. We see it throughout Scripture, Old and New Testament. We hear it like it's the next second thing. And I think it's best said in Chronicles 2, or 2 Chronicles, excuse me, that it's about God's people and they share one heart. Now if you flip through Matthew, you'll see that Matthew tells us that we are equal as brothers and sisters, as all people alike, and that we heard the same thing in Scripture, that we are the parts of one body. We heard that in this morning's Scripture reading. And you have to admit that our bodies aren't going just to throw us away or throw away its body parts. But then again, if you have a Mr. Potato Head, you can just pull off all the parts and reattach them wherever you like to put them. You can put the ear where the nose goes or the, the eye where the, where, the, where the ear goes or whatever you want to do, you can change up all those parts. But our body, a real body, its parts are semi-permanent. And now we heard earlier that the body has many different parts and not just one part and our bodies come together. And God puts each of those parts together just where God wants them to be. And if you haven't already figured it out, the Apostle Paul who is writing this is somewhat being comedic here that he's kind of joking around a little using the funny illustrations and using the real human body as the example. As Paul is telling us that the body has many different parts because it would be very strange to see a body made of just one part. Sort of like the zombie movies from the 50s and 60s where you see this monster with all like 14 eyes all over its place. So the reason why I'm kind of talking about this is because the body of Christ has different parts. And one of the mistakes that we as Christians make sometimes is that we're certain, it, we, we, we get settled in a certain way. And we have certain passions and we find that we find ourselves wanting to be around those other parts, sometimes that are just like ours. It is easy for the hands to get frustrated at the feet because the feet don't care about what the hands and all that stuff. And the nose gets frustrated at the eyes because the eyes don't care about what that nose stuff is. But there is reality. God tells us that we need each other. I think a little bit about the church in America. We often find churches where they are all just white people. They may all be just Asian people. They may all just be black people. And of course, churches with people who are all Fruit Loops. <laughs> now, this isn't necessarily wrong. It just doesn't look like what heaven is supposed to look like. Scripture tells us the church is supposed to look like heaven. People of all races and tongues and tribes and ethnicities, frosted flakes and fruit loops, all joining together in their love for, the, for God and for Christ. And we heard in scripture this morning that all the parts are important. But I think we have to think about when this was written and whom it was written for. Because the people of the day who were considered to be the least important, the weakest, were culturally and socially children. In today's society, it's all about the children and all about the young ones, and we compare them to this and that. But it was the attitude that the children should be seen and not heard. Kind of remember that growing up a little bit, kind of stay over there in the corner. You know, we can see you, but we don't want to hear. We don't want to hear you. It was this mentality that it doesn't matter if one dies, we'll just make another one. And kids back in that time, well, just one level of them, they were just one level above the family pet. And of course, back in those days, they didn't have a family pet, so those kids were at the bottom of the barrel here. A good example of this is the scripture of children trying to come to Jesus 
and the disciples basically telling the children, go away, don't bother Jesus, he doesn't want to be bothered. But Jesus pretty much comes back to them and says, let the children come to me. Now those children are us. The parts that are considered the weakest and the least horrible actually should be treated as the most important. I have to say that I am proud of my church because we dwell together. We live together in harmony. I am proud that we are not a congregation that is divided and that we have this group, that we don't have this group over here and this group over there and that group way back there. We are a group that is one. This congregation is one for the most part, united with one another, in harmony with one another, and therefore that one another are together that we call and care for each other. One thing that I am proud about this congregation is that we are not a church with mega-sized numbers. Well, that wouldn't be a bad thing, but while at the same time that people in a congregation of any size sometimes have that tendency to want to go hide. I always love it on Sunday mornings when we get new people that they all want to sit in the back of the, back of the church, <laughs> kind of want to come in, get done with worship, and sneak back out afterwards and not be seen. That happens in any size church. They are the people who sometimes will get disappointed especially if something happens like maybe being hospitalized or surgery or whatever comes along that they feel that sometimes they're put in that background because sometimes they feel that they are never heard by anyone but know that this happens all the time all over the place and even though we are small for the most part we are like family with one another there are those times when someone might fall through the cracks but you know that we are here and we are all part of the family and we try to put those pieces back together in a moment's notice. I actually heard the other day that there is no such thing as a church that is, that is bad sized. That there are only bad attitudes about church size. And whether your church is small or big, we have to choose and connect and engage with what we have and who we are as a church. Furthermore, the, the, the part that regardless of its size of a church, it's the church's responsibility to provide to you opportunities to connect. And it's our job to make sure that we don't fall through those cracks and, cracks and we have that opportunity to connect. Connect with your church so you can be cared for and so you can make a difference. But we as Christians sometimes have to realize that it is our duty not only to nourish ourselves at the same time, it is our responsibilities as the bodies to become nourished and to be part of the engagement of our church. As a church family, we need to be those people who engage and come to church and also are part of getting involved of what the church does. <laughs> getting involved with a ministry or even something that is low key as bringing something to the church. Whether you're involved in a group study like Theology on Tap, or maybe sometimes people helping Jerry with corresponding to our inmates, or even engaging in new pro projects like the Pack the Pantry that we're starting next week. Jesus didn't come to volunteer back in his day. He came to serve. And I look at when we volunteer for various things in this congregation, it's part of our service to God. So when we partake in either a ministry or engaging in an event that we held, you're actually giving your service back to God. We serve because Christ first served us. When we come together and work as a team or a family, we are only strengthening what we have as the church. I am proud of my church because we are family. Consider serving with us next week maybe at the rummage sale. Maybe make a new friend or two, or when you come to church next Sunday, bring a box full of stuff for the pantry. Just show your love and support to those who may be less fortunate than you or I or anybody else sitting in this room. In 1 Peter, we hear that God has given each of us a gift that is, comes from great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them to serve one another. So if you're one of those who think that you don't have anything to contribute, well, I think you need to rethink that because God is telling us otherwise. The body of Christ needs each of our gifts. And as we said earlier, that the body of Christ is the church. 
They worshiped together at the temple each day. They met in homes and they shared their meals with great joy and generosity. That's the model that scripture gives us. And if you haven't figured it out, this is why Christians come together. We come and we eat together, and we come and do this together, and it's all about this. Have you ever noticed that things always engage around food in a church? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whether it's fellowship after worship, or a potluck, or going out to dinner, or brunch with a pastor, you know, if there's not good food around, then we're really not the church. <laughs> Scripture kind of says that we are to become closer with our family. Whether it's our regular family, our family, or choice, it's where we care for those who are part of it. Keep in, not, keep in mind that we cannot live Christianity in isolation. We need to be connected. We may not get the nerve to do things sometimes, but the family that we come together, we don't <coughs> always get to choose or pick. Family is where we build the bricks and the mortar and grow. This is why we build God's house together as a family and we do it together. <coughs> it's time to be a part of the family. It's time to continue and move forward supporting one another, encouraging one another, and most of all, having the other ones back. You know, as we've been saying the last several months since we've been back into in-person worship, we're going into our 50th year. We wouldn't still be here if we didn't have each other's back, if we weren't a family, if we weren't connected all of these years. Going back to the very first beginning of time in 1971 as they sat in someone's living room to conduct worship. And then through the years, all the various places that we've had worship and the things that we've done, it's something to be proud of. I am proud of my church because we are a family. Many blessings to each one of you this morning, Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church. Amen. Good morning, family. Good morning to all of you who are sitting here. Good morning to all of you who are watching online. You are all part of our family here at Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church. And I, for one, am very grateful for each and every one of you. Just a couple of reminders. If you haven't already filled out your green card, if you're here in person, please do that. Prayer requests can be on the back. And if you're at home, please send us an email with your prayer requests. <laughs> also, uh, just want to again pay attention to the inserts. We have the rummage sale insert. If you're planning on bringing something or can attend, please fill this out or do the sign-up sheet. We also have our Pack the Pantry, so you can get a list of things that you can bring next week. It's the fourth Sunday. And we want to remind you uh, that our capital campaign is still going. There's still a lot of things to repair on the outside of the building. So two more weeks for that if you can. Donate, we, we appreciate that. So, since we are all members of the body of Christ, and we are all members of this church, what do you do for people that are family, members that are family? Well, you love them, you pray for them, you spend time with them and you celebrate all their good things in their life, you be concerned about them in bad times, and you help take care of them. As members of this church, it's no different. I, I ask and, and I hope that you will love us and you will pray for us. I also hope that you will spend time with some of our activities, whether they be online or in person, or some of our events, that you'll help us celebrate, especially with our 50th anniversary coming up here in a couple of months. Of course, you'll be concerned for us, I hope, and I hope you'll support us and take care of us. That's what these offering baskets are for. This is one way of supporting and taking care of us financially. But we also ask that you support us and take care of us with your time and your talent by participating in things. It's how we, as the body of Christ, share our gifts with this church and with one another. So I pray that you will enjoy this family to the, to the utmost, that you will be a part of us to the utmost, and that you will bring us joy and happiness every moment of your life.
So as we come to the table this day, I remind those of you who may be worshiping with us online, if you haven't already gone to your pantry, to go and get something that can constitutes as communion for you, whether it's bread and juice or cookies and coffee or whatever you have to be a part of this meal. So as we gather around this table, we would come and not as strangers, but those who we are called into your family of steadfast love and faithfulness. You have poured out the spirit of strength upon the bread and the bread which is broken for us that we might tear down the walls which are divided to build bridges and reconciliation and with those who may be broken. We know that you pour the grace of the Spirit through the cup, which is passed to each of us, that we may recognize those who are sisters and brothers, not outsiders and not people who need to be feared. As we feast on this meal of remembrance and we join our hands and hearts with those around us, let us recognize that we are woven together with the scarlet threads of steadfast love and faithfulness and we come today so as we take this moment to know that Jesus was up in the upper room and on that night that he was taken from us he took the bread from the table he blessed it and broke it and said to each and every one to take and eat for this is my body given for you each time that you eat of this do so in remembrance of me and likewise After the meal, he took the cup. As he blessed it and passed it, he said that this is the cup that is the new covenant of my life that is poured out for you and all people for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of this often, and as often as you do, do so in remembrance of me. As we know with this bread and with this cup that we remember the world and remember things dwelling among us that are full of grace and truth. And we remember that new birth of Christ's death that is given us through the resurrection and through the life and we offers us that praise and thanksgiving as the holy living sacrifice in the union of Christ's offering for us. Will you please pray with me? Gracious loving God, as we come to this day, we come not as your sisters and brothers, but we come as your children. As we feast on this meal of remembrance, let us join our hands and hearts with those around us that we may recognize that we are woven together that we are God's given gift as children. And when we come away from this time we call life, when we cross to that promised land placed, and the place that is called home, we will gather with all who have journeyed before us and after us, offering enduring witness to hope, peace, and forgiveness. As we say, God and community, holy and one, amen. blessing of God that is given to each one of us. As we go out into the world, we go out through the gifts that God's tender mercies and protection that is given to each and every one of us. As we go out through God the Creator, God the Savior, and God the Holy Spirit.
Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.